Army targets ISIS terrorist dens in Hasaka, Palmyra, and Sabadani. And Secretary General of Hezbollah Party Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah reaffirms the need to find a political solution for the crisis in Syria. And in retaliation for the continued Saudi aggression against Yemeni cities, the Yemeni army and the People's Committee's launch more than 50 missiles against Saudi military positions. Good afternoon. This is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. Syrian army units destroyed an armored vehicle in Asirmania in Idlib countryside to the north of the country, killing several terrorists. While in Dara'a in southern Syria, Syrian army units foiled a new attack launched by terrorists against the city. Army units also destroyed terrorist organizations' dens in Khirbat Ghazali, Inkhil and Jasim villages. In Damascus countryside, army units killed 17 terrorists belonging to the so-called Al-Islam army in Jobar Zamalka and Anishabiye near the Syrian capital Damascus. Also in the vicinity of the Syrian capital Damascus, Syrian Air Force launched intensive airstrikes against terrorist gatherings in a Zabadani city. A missile warehouse used by terrorists was destroyed and several terrorists were killed or wounded. Our reporter in Hasaka said that an army unit killed several ISIS terrorists and arrested one in a Nashua neighborhood. Army units also targeted ISIS dens in the Red Villas neighborhood killing and wounding several of them. And in central Syria, army units destroyed ISIS gatherings and vehicles in the center of the city of Palmyra. Army units also continued to advance towards the city of Palmyra and clashed with ISIS terrorists in the eastern farms. Intensive strikes were also launched against ISIS terrorists in al Bayarat area to the west of Palmyra. Earlier, army units established control over the driving school in the city. The General Federation of Trade Unions honored 500 families of workers who were killed due to terrorist acts during a Ramadan iftar banquet held at Sahara Hotel in Damascus. The families of the martyrs took great pride in their relatives, expressing their belief that their blood will pave the way of victory for the future generations who will make life better for every Syrian than it used to be before. Taima Hamada, a daughter of a martyr from the Union of Chemical Industries Workers in Damascus, delivered a speech in the name of the martyrs' families in which she said every Syrian citizen is like a soldier fighting in her or his position. Hamada added that Syria's children pledge that they will not give up or yield to anyone and will go all the way until attaining victory. Prime Minister Wael Halaqi, for his part, said in a statement on the sideline of the banquet that the martyrs of the working class were the first among those who took up arms alongside the army, hailing their great role in enhancing the steadfastness of the country through building the national economy. Secretary General of Lebanon's Hezbollah Party, Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah, reaffirmed the need to find a political solution for the crisis in Syria saying that the states that are causing trouble in Syria must cease from doing this. In a speech he delivered on the occasion of Quds Day, Nasrallah said that if Syria is lost, then Palestine will be lost as well, and that what is happening in Syria and the Takfiri plot both serve Israel, not noting that Israeli leaders have recently expressed satisfaction over the war, destruction and fighting that is taking place in Syria. Nasrallah said that the states that are funding, arming and smuggling gunmen into Syria and that employ media to instigate conflict and prevent Syrians from holding dialogue must seize these actions which stoke the fire in it. Stressing the need for Syria to recover its strength and position, he asserted that Hezbollah supporters just popular demand in Syria and reforms 
political solution. However, Hezbollah is against destroying Syria and its state army and against having Takfiri groups seize control of it. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani affirmed the necessity of finding a political solution for the crisis in Syria, saying that Iran and Russia will continue supporting the Syrian government. Following his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Rouhani emphasized the necessity for Iran and Russia to take serious steps to confront terrorism and cooperate with other states in the region to uproot this phenomenon. Rouhani preferred that multilateral cooperation is necessary to end terrorism. In more international news, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Gennady Gatilov said that the UN envoy to Syria Stefan de Mistura agrees with Moscow's stance that finding terror fighting terrorism should be a priority in the current stage in Syria. Gatilov added that he discussed with Mr. de Mistura the upcoming steps to launch a political settlement process in Syria. The UN envoy said that he has several practical ideas in this regard as he will deliver them to the United Nations Security General, General then to the International Security Council at the end of this month. In retaliation for the continued Saudi aggression against the Yemeni cities, the Yemeni army and the People's Committees launched more than 50 missiles against Saudi military positions. A Yemeni military source said that about 18 missiles targeted Al Ataya position in Jazan, whereas about 38 others were launched into other positions in the area. With this, we conclude our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region, and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our Facebook page, Syria TV channels. You may also watch the Syrian Satellite Channel live on YouTube. Now to the latest business and market news with Nani Man, but after a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The People's Assembly discussed the performance of the Water Resources Ministry and the water shortages in a number of provinces due to terrorist attacks. Members of the People's Assembly inquired particularly about the water situation in Damascus, Damascus countryside, Dara, Aleppo and some areas in Homs, stressing the need of providing alternative water resources and setting up emergency plans to deal with repeated water shortages caused by terrorist attacks. In response to the MP's inquiries, Minister of Water Resources Kamal al Sheikha said, gave a review of the water situation in Syria, pointing out that Syria is suffering from annual water deficit of 1.5 billion cubic meters. However, he added that the ministry is preparing a strategy for water projects to bridge the gap between the needs and the actual water supplies. The Cabinet held a special meeting to discuss importing medicines in light of the unified mechanisms, mechanism adopted by the government. Prime Minister Wael Halaki said such a mechanism would work as an administrative reform project with economic dimensions to cut down on both administrative and economic corruption. This promising mechanism, he said, would help in steering medical companies in the right direction away from financial and personal benefits and in controlling the increase in prices and preventing any possible corruption cases. He added that the unified mechanism of importing medicines would also be useful in rationalizing spending, importing and controlling demand on foreign currency, in addition to breaking medicine monopolies practiced practiced by some private drug stores, while stressing that the government is bent on combating medicine corruption, al halaki assured that the medicines imported for the health sector are of high quality and credibility. The amount of wheat marketed to all marketing centers around the country has reached about 330,000 tons, while the amount of barley has reached about 63,000 tons so far. Director of Grains Marketing Establishment affirmed that the establishment has opened 29 centers all over the country for purchasing wheat and other five centers for buying barley in Hama, Hasake and Homs. For his part, head of graining marketing department, Kamishli Branch, said that the total amount of the marketed wheat in Hasake reached 201,000 
tons, adding that the amount of barley has reached 35,000 tons with no difficulties facing the marketing process. A group of 11 businessmen are gearing up to open commercial centers in a number of countries around the world to support the national economy and face the unjust economic siege imposed on Syria. Samer Rabek Ribata, sorry, one of the group's members affirmed that the group will work on coordinating among industry, trade and agriculture sectors and will organize projects to revitalize national economy and support the Syrian pound. He added that the commercial centers added will be opened in Egypt, Algeria, Venezuela and South Africa, while other centers would be opened in Dubai and Germany in the near future. And these centers will include various Syrian products, including handicrafts, textiles and food products, with focus on the products that Syria is re-owned for. The ministries of the Management, Development and Public Works have set up a workshop in the Ministry of Public Works to launch a workshop plan in order to achieve an administrative and institutional development and improve the methods and mechanisms of the work. The participants in the workshop highlighted the most important suggestions that would develop the plan throughout the study of a current situation and show the future vision of the Ministry and its general objectives, policies and programs. At the same time, put an analytical framework of reality and executive mechanisms to promote this framework of reality and develop the legislations of work and labors to combine with ambitions in addition to the development of systems and producer procedures that improved, improved the performance, especially in the reconstruction phase. BRICS summit stressed that the solution to the Syrian crisis is a political one and called for refrain from politicizing humanitarian aids. In the final statement of BRICS summit, the leaders of the BRICS countries strongly commend, condemned the, at <coughs> sorry, the atrocities committed by ISIS terrorists and the other terrorist groups in Syria, Iraq and the region. Russian President Vladimir Putin confirmed this to the continuation of the corruption of combating terrorism, stressed the need to respect the sovereignty of the countries and non-interference in its domestic affairs. While Chinese President expressed his satisfaction regarding the level of development in the economic and commercial partnership of the BRICS. Also Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, said that the sanctions being imposed by other countries were hurting global economy. Jacob Zuma, South African President, proposed unifying visa and interest systems for businessmen and the President of Brazil called for multipolarity and a more just world. Turkey's transactional value recorded 4 billion USD US dollars deficit last May, according to the Central Bank of Turkey. The deficit in the foreign trade in the country reached $3,990,000,000 last May. The deficit exceeded the economic analyst estimates amounting $3,600,000,000. The Turkish economy has fluctuated sharply recently due to scandals of corruption and bribery which Erdogan, his ministries, and other related relatives, including his son Bilal, were responsible for. The financial exchange of Damascus market exceeded 15,850,000 during the last week. The financial exchange reached 1,122,367 shares. The index closed on value reaching 1,195.79 part of the point. The banking sector ranked first in terms of value and volume of transactions, followed by the insurance sector, then the industrial one. And now over to some main currencies exchange rates according to the Bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria.
ladies and gentlemen. This was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.